Hello and welcome to News Panorama, coming to you live from the NTA Network Center, JOS. Heads of intelligence and security services across Africa meet in Abuja. President Mohamed Buhari tasks participants to design a sustainable security architecture for the continent. With the controversy that trailed the Rugala settlement projects in parts of the country, the federal government is soon to make a public declaration on the issue. Issues of building collapse as they continue to present a worrisome situation, Plato State Government takes urgent measures to avert recurrence. And for this package, our guest on Panorama is the Deputy Governor of Plato State, Professor Sony Choden. I am yours sincerely, Fanny Bonsale. Welcome back. Heads of intelligence and security services across Africa have begun a brainstorming session towards, towards finding lasting solutions to illicit financial outflows from the continent in view of the devastating consequences on national security and development. This is at the 16th ordinary session of the Committee on Intelligence and Security Services of Africa, hosted by the National Intelligence Agency of Nigeria. President Muhammad Buhari, who declared the session open, described the task not only as laudable, but essential to Africa's prosperity and stability. State House correspondent Adam Sambo reports. It is estimated that African countries lose over $60 billion annually due to illicit financial outflows, a figure much higher than the total aid coming to the continent. In fact, records from the United Nations show that between 1980 to 2009, nearly $1.4 trillion was taken out of Africa, a continent in their need of development finance. This conference of African intelligence and security services is therefore an attempt to lay a solid base for collaborative efforts required towards stemming the tide. In Nigeria, we have risen to the challenge. The fight against corruption remains at the core of our efforts to accelerate national development. We have recorded successes even though the perpetrators are not giving up and are trying to fight back. I am therefore pleased that this conference will boost the sense of urgency that we collectively have about this devastation and raise our response capacity at operational levels. Firm and unwavering action, President Buhari said, is imperative towards achieving the objectives as terrorist networks and other criminal syndicates actively undermining the security and stability of Africa not only fund their operations from the proceeds of crime, but are implicated in much of the illicit financial outflows from the continent. I therefore urge you to develop actionable strategies to stem the flow of illicit funds from our continent. Give priority to examining the links between crime and instability on our continent and propose measures to ensure that terrorists and criminals are denied access to our financial systems. Incoming chairperson of CISA and Director General of the National Intelligence Agency, Ambassador Ahmed Rufaya Abubakar, said other than direct harm to economies, illicit financial outflows facilitate financing of terrorist organizations, criminal ventures, and other subversive activities which constitute an existential threat to the continent which no amount of foreign assistance can undo. Putting an end to illicit financial outflows and several other security challenges is a task that we can and must do. We want to give assurance of CISA's continued efforts to fight all forms of security threats, including traditional and emerging transborder crimes, such as illicit financial flows. Our partnership with CISA is vital for our collective efforts to promote peace, and we must continue working together to strengthen it. More specifically, special attention should be paid to the complex competition between superpowers, the spillover from the Gulf crisis, and their adverse impact on our continent. The Committee of Intelligence and Security Services of Africa, CISA, was established 
in Abuja 15 years ago to build bridges of cooperation, collaboration, brotherhood, and solidarity towards confronting emerging security challenges facing the continent. In Abuja, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. Mohamed Buhari is soon to make a public declaration on the Ruga settlement program recently put on hold by the federal government. This is to enable the Nigerians to fully understand it, its view, its viewpoint on the matter, allowing controversy, following the controversy generated in parts of the country. The owner of Ife, Oba Ade Ogungusi, announced this while speaking to journalists after an audience with the president on security and other national issues. Again, Adam Sambo reports. The owner of Ife, Oba Ogunusi or Jaja II, met President Muhammad Buhari on behalf of other traditional leaders in southwest Nigeria. Their discussions held behind closed doors centered mainly on the challenges of security in the region, which he described as worrisome. The issue at hand in southwest is real. We have wrong people in our midst. The peace and peaceful coexistence in southwest, we still want to keep that. We don't want any war to happen. We don't want any attrition. We don't want any anarchy. We want to work with government to defend our land. And um, to the glory of God, um, we told Mr. President that, and uh, he's uh, on the same page with us. While advising politicians to guard their utterances in the interest of the country, Oba Ogumusi said his engagement with the Nigerian leader was fulfilling. The president has said he will give directive immediately with the IG to go and see every nook and crannies of traditional institutions in Southwest. And that will probably extend across the entire country so that we can separate the corn from the chaff. And um, you will see a lot of results going forward. And everything will come down by the very special grace of God. The owner of Ife, who described as unfortunate that some miscreants are hiding under the name of Fulanese to create confusion in the land, said the Ruga settlement issue was also discussed at the meeting. He has assured that he will say his own side of the story about Ruga because um, he wants to let the world and the Nigerians in particular know the true side of the story because it's being read out of context. Oba Adeye Ogunsi is the co-chairman of the National Council of Traditional Rulers of Nigeria, which has the Sultan of Sokoto as chairman. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. The Senate has called on the Minister of Finance to release all the funds due to the Northeast Development Commission, the National Emergency Management Agency, and the National Commission for Refugees, Migrants, and Internally Displaced Persons to enable them address the disturbing humanitarian crisis not only in the Northeast but across the country. National Assembly correspondent Ignatius Unko reports. The mood in the Senate literally turned emotional as a result of the motion that painted a sordid picture of the humanitarian crisis in the Northeast. The motion by Thank Senator Lane Dume and described the extent the... of the humanitarian crisis in Nigeria, especially Borno, Adamawa, Yobe, and Zamfra states, as precarious as it urged the executive arm of government to submit to the National Assembly a supplementary budget for adequate funding. More than one, seven point. One million people need humanitarian assistance in the Northeast. This issue of humanitarian crisis is really getting out of hand. And see how we can create a widow's might as a Senate to show our practical support so that other Nigerians can follow. Urge the federal government to also, as a matter of urgency, revisit the humanitarian crisis amongst the Bakasi people of Cross River State. The legislators commended President Muhammad Buhari over the extended continental shelf project and urged him to pay up the outstanding financial commitment to ensure its conclusion, as moved by Senator George Sekibo. And make further delivery effort for its completion before it is done bad. The benefits to be derived from the additional area, if proven, is very, very immense. In an age where security matters a lot. We need to look at both left, right and center, from the sea, on the land, and all that. 
And let me also join all of us in commending Mr. President CNC for actualizing this project really by funding it. The Senate has confirmed the appointment of Obama Maska as executive commissioner and three others as non-executive commissioners of the Nigerian Communications Commission, while Habu Galadima was also confirmed as director general of the National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies. Senator Uche Ekunife drew the attention of the Senate to the storm that destroyed several homes in Obosi, Mbo, and Orauku in Anambra State and requested that the Ecological Fund Office should visit the areas and all other states affected by global erosion. President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, granted audience to some board members and management of the Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, during which he implored them to use their medium to preach peace and unity in Nigeria. So we need our people to stay here to develop this country. And therefore, we must ensure that we remain united. Senator Lawan described the role of electronics media as very important, especially in this era of fake news. From the National Assembly, Ignatius Mkwo, NTN News. Housing is said to be widely ranked among the most critical factors that determine the quality of life of the people, given the fact that it is help in meeting the social, economic, and environmental needs of human beings. Housing is therefore an influential factor in enhancing the well-being and security of communities. In the wake of the rising spate of building collapse across the country, and Nigerian cities especially with the recent occurrence in Jos, correspondent General Dimu takes a look at the causes and possible recommendations to prevent future occurrences. Building collapse in Nigeria is fast becoming a worrisome regular occurrence with each recording a number of casualties, both human and resource. In recent times, buildings have collapsed in various states across the country, the widely known being in Lagos, Rivers, Oyo, Abuja, and most recently, Plateau State, which considering the loss of lives can be comparable to major disasters such as floods, tsunamis, tornadoes, and the likes. What then do experts say are responsible for the collapse of both projects on the construction or fully completed? So you find out that people, people just die for no fault of theirs because somebody has decided to be a quack. Somebody has decided not to advise the client properly on what and how to go about some of these things. Misuse of the building itself. Misuse of the building. For example, you have an approval to build a two-story building. And you go ahead and put a five-story building. You are abusing the building. Sometimes you have a design for residential building. You convert it into a school. If you convert it into a school, the engineer has already provided for the load that that building can carry. The rate of building collapse in the country is said to be a reflection of the organization and performance of building control activities and sophistication of construction professionals. Hence, the need for key players in the building industry to strive to maintain a high level of professionalism in construction consultations. The law requires you to subject it to approval. And the approval process, experts are there in the various fields. Engineers are there, architects are there, builders are there. All those that are professionally licensed, you know, to check, uh, will see your drawings and then before it is approved. Since 2006, there has been a document, a document called the National Building Code that has been in the National Assembly, which we expected as professionals in the field that in the event of its signing, of its being signed into law, we can now, we will now be able to regulate the activities of every professional. Although the incidence is not peculiar to Nigeria alone, the trend is, however, a major source of concern to the government, relevant agencies in the building industry, and the citizens who are the eventual victims of the disaster. In Jos, 
Zen Redding Moon, NTN News. With me in the studio is the Deputy Governor of Plateau State, Professor Sonny Chodin, who officially visited the site of the recent building collapse in Jos and even made some policy statements. It will be recorded that more than 10 people were lost, including three children. Sir, it is an honor to have you on Panorama. And my condolences on behalf of NTA First. Thank you very much. Uh, sir, following your visit to the scene of the recent building collapse in Jos, what can you say from your experiences is the main uh, reason that accounts for building collapse in Nigerian cities? Thank you. Um, I don't think you can pinpoint just one issue or one factor as being responsible for uh, the series of building collapse we've had across the country. There are many factors. And um, let me start with uh, what happened in just a few days ago. Uh, that was a clear case of refusal to follow laid down regulations. This was a building that was approved uh, to be a two-story building, but um, suddenly the owner decided to add one more floor. Add one more floor. And of course, that was uh, a disaster waiting to happen, and it happened, unfortunately. And uh, just for the records, um, uh, we lost 15, 16 people. 16. Because even as of yesterday, two dead bodies were still retrieved from the area. So it was an unfortunate development. Apart from uh, you know the refusal of people to abide by lay down regulations, another issue is the reliance on quack professionals, professionals that are not that are professionals only uh, in court. They are not real professionals, and they go out and participate in the construction of buildings approving buildings when they are not supposed to. A third reason is where uh, people engaging in con con constructing buildings do not abide by the regulations as given by the uh, relevant bodies. Let me give you a typical example. The Nigeria Medical Association was building a secretariat in Jos. You recall that uh, two years back, the building collapsed. And what happened there was simply the fact that uh, they did not even wait for the approval of the building plan before they started by the Jones Metropolitan uh, Board. They went and started building. And of course, what happened eventually happened. But if they had waited for uh, approval of the building plan by the Jones Metropolitan Development Board, it, it, it may not have happened. So, like I said, there are multiple reasons why you have this. Now, Your, Your Excellency, it appears that uh, the laws are there. Yes. But why have government agencies failed to enforce these things? Because all these things are known. Until the disaster happens, then we begin to cry. Now, I think, to some extent, the agencies try to enforce the laws, but people refuse to subject themselves to these laws. Uh, like this building that collapsed, um, the same person has a similar structure, you know, uh, and he had been warned not to elevate the building. And he, at first he agreed and kept the building at the level that was approved, and without the agency realizing, suddenly he, he increased the, the, uh, the, the height of the building. And of course, the structure wouldn't hold because the foundation was not meant for a three-story building, you know. So there are times when the agency has its hands tight. You give directives, and people don't abide by it. And I think um, uh, getting the law enforcement agencies involved is a last resort. But before you do that you tend to find out that the buildings always uh, you know, have collapsed. So I think it's a two-way affair. People should try to abide by the regulations as stipulated. Secondly, the relevant agencies should also do the needful in terms of uh, regular and constant monitoring. And where people do not abide by the regulations, of course the law uh, enforcement agencies 
uh, should be brought in. Now, you <coughs> gave a directive that uh, particularly ensures the Geos Metropolitan Development Board has, we have seen, commenced demolition, some of those buildings that were uh, earmarked for demolition due to observed weaknesses. Now, what other measures is government at all levels expected to take to ensure that we don't hear of building collapse again? Yeah, one other area that needs to be emphasized is enlightening people. Enlightening them first to understand that it is to their benefit to abide by laid down regulations when it comes to building houses. Secondly, it is also in their interest to use uh, proper you know, materials. Where you are supposed to use 10 bags of cement, you don't use two. But, you know, people always try to cut corners to, to, to save costs, which eventually costs life. So when you enlighten them, you educate them on the need to do exactly what needs to be done, as, as specified by the professionals. I think that will help. So your final word, Your Excellency, you are running out of time. Your final word to Nigerians on this building collapse. Yeah, my final word for Nigerians is that we should always learn to abide by laid down regulations. We should also need to do what needs to be done in terms of the safety for ourselves and for our communities. Uh, thank you very much for sparing the time. Thank you. Now, moving on, in the last three weeks, Zamfara State has enjoyed relative peace with more than 200 bandits surrendering arms and embarking and embracing amnesty and peaceful dialogue offered by the state government. Thanks to the air component of the Nigeria Air Force, which provided the needed air patrol for ground troops. Governor of Zamfara State, Alaji Bello Muhammad Matawale, said this when he visited the Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar in Abuja. Doing dear reports. Zamfara State is one of the states ravaged by insecurity, especially in the northwestern region. Banditry, kidnapping and robbery are top on the list, a development which threatened the peace and economic stability of the states. To address these and other security challenges, the state government instituted a committee to interface with critical stakeholders. It also sought the support of the Nigerian Air Force for the deployment of its air components as a backing for the ground troop. These, however, led to the introduction of the Operation Sharon Daji in some areas of the states. Today, the story has changed as the states now enjoy relative peace to follow up on these achievements, the governor is again at the headquarters of the Nigerian Air Force to renew the synergy. We've done this in order to make sure that uh, we have a lasting peace in my state and we appreciate all the support that your men are giving us and they are equal to the task and they are equal to the standard. Chief of the Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Abakar, said the 207 Quick Response Unit with over 700 personnel is receiving the needed logistics and other support to smoke out criminals within the states. The Air Force is said is deploying additional helicopters to its fleets. That the Nigerian Air Force will not relent, will continue to make sure that uh, uh, we have aircraft, sufficient aircraft that will support you. You are aware of the recently acquired Augusta 109 power helicopter which were uh, commissioned by the Vice President on behalf of the President during the Nigerian Air Force Day here in Abuja. Very soon we are going to deploy those helicopters and we are also going to add the number of regiment personnel that we have in Gusau. While assuring the government and people of Zamfara State of its support, the Nigerian Air Force stressed the need for intelligence sharing to fish out criminals in Abuja, Dui, Dia, NT News. The Trade Division of the Nigerian Army is seeking the collaboration of the Industrial Training Fund, ITF, towards providing entrepreneurial skills to men of the division. This is to ensure that the division is economically empowered as they defend the territorial integrity of the nation. 
Progress of Vines Lord, tell us more. Concerned about the prediction that the Nigerian population will grow to about 500 million by the year 2050, the Director General of ITF, while evaluating the Nigerian industrial situation, sees the urgent need for Nigerians to be skilled. This, he says, the fund is prepared to carry to the barracks, as skill has no barrier. With paper qualification, yes, good, but you can't fix the roads. You can't fix infrastructure, you can't fix the economy, you can't grow SMEs with that. But with skills, you can do much more than that. The GOC, who is at the fund primarily to partner and source economic empowerment, especially for the families of men who are at the war front, says even though 3D has some skill programs, the cantonment needs more intervention for the men and their families. That there is no greater partner for us to look at to help us in ensuring that both in-service and out-of-service, our wards also are able to be trained, uh, you know, so that they will be able to contribute, uh, you know, to the, 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 the community. The fund was also reassured of the DIV's military support so that it can carry out its statutory responsibility in a peaceful atmosphere. From the ITF headquarters, Rinred Silvanus Lot, NTA News. On this note, we come to the end of our package of Panorama from the NTA Just Network Center. Good day.